Hello fellow space engineers, Gopescope here from the Gopescope Gaming Channel, and I'd like to welcome you back to our Timing Block tutorial. So we looked at our first uh, tutorial and most of the um, basic functions of a timer block, and a little bit of the functions of some of the functional blocks. By functional blocks I mean blocks that do things, not armor blocks and stuff like that that you can't interact with. So in this episode we're going to cover the uh, last bit of functionality of the timer blocks, and then kind of dive more into what you can actually do with them, uh, using them with the various functional blocks. Um, so this, this episode will cover the end of the timing block basics and kind of get us started into timing block creations, which um, I plan on continuing uh, doing some episodes here and there, um, seeing what you guys would like to see created with a timer block or several timer blocks or many, many timer blocks, um, depending on what's needed. Um, think, of, think of whatever creations you've tried to make that maybe you've had trouble with and you'd like some help with, uh, and go ahead and shoot uh, me a message or send, uh, put something in the comments and let me know um, what it is that you are trying to accomplish and try to be detailed so that I know exactly what you're talking about, and uh, perhaps we can cover that in a future episode if I can figure it out. No guarantee, um, but I will do my best. So let's jump right into... Um, the last uh, kind of basic part or basic thing that timer blocks can do. Um, at the end of the last episode, we had set these up so that they chain uh, one after another so that when we, when we start one of these, uh, they, they go ahead and start everything else. Um, wow, that's uh, some psychedelic stuff going on there. So um, what we want to do now is, is go ahead and stop all of this craziness from happening. Go ahead and turn the uh, the shoot functions off and the lights off. So uh, when we had this chaining going on, we did that by setting up, uh, kind of nesting the timer blocks, having timer block one starting two, two starting three, and three starting four. And now all that we need to do to make a loop, which is what we're going to be talking about now, is tell timer block four, or the last timer block in the list, to go ahead and restart timer block one. And uh, when we hit start, we can see that they're starting one after another, so it's still the chaining process, but now you can see it's going through. Now it's a loop, one after another, just like that. So that's, that's sort of the last kind of like basic timer block um, function. Uh, from here, most of what we can talk about is, is what we can actually do with the various functional blocks working with the timer blocks uh, and the different settings we have on those. Um, so uh, as far as this loop, uh, the loop segment goes, the last thing to talk about is stopping a loop. So now we, we've got this going, and uh, let's, let's do something like we've done in the past here. Uh, we've got timer block one. We can tell that to stop. Okay, so let's... Let's see, it's going through, and it's, okay, we told it to stop. Look at that. Now, we timed it just right. When timer block one was about to start the next block, we told it to stop, and it stopped the entire loop because of that. But if you have a loop that's going faster, or you want a more sure way to stop all of them, what you can do is go ahead and, uh, to make it easy, we can make it a group. Call it timers. You can call it whatever you'd like. So now all of those timers are linked to this same group. And we can take this groups, the, the group of timers, drop it down here, and, and assign the stop function for those to this, this button. And now, whichever point in the process these are running through, it will stop all of them. So uh, we can go ahead and start everything up again. It's running through. Hit stop. You can see it stops. So that's all you need to do. If you've got, you got a runaway um, loop going on and you want to end it, you just hit stop on all of those timers at the same time. Uh, and then we can go ahead and turn off these, these rockets again, uh, turn off the lights, kind of reset things. And now, uh, now that's, uh, that's oppo as opposed to turning the timer block off. So let's, um, let's see what happens there, actually, just for demonstration. So if, you, if we're running through here, right, and then we go ahead and turn the timer blocks off. Okay. So now they're not sending any commands because they're off. So it's sort of interrupted things. Um, if we turn them back on again, now let's see what happens. You see how they resume. So when we've told them to stop, they remain on, but they stop indefinitely. They, until you tell it to start again, it won't continue, it won't uh, go back through and start the loop again. 
If you turn the blocks off instead of stop, it will actually just interrupt as long as they're off uh, the sending of those messages. But as soon as you turn them on, as you can see, they will resume that loop again. So now if we tell the whole group to stop again, you can see they've all stopped. And now let's take a look at uh, some of the things that we can actually do with the, the various blocks here, like lights, for example. Um, you can change the colors, you can change the radius, uh, which is, is the, the size of the light itself, uh, how large area the light takes up and, uh, and how much it illuminates. Fall off is, is how dark it gets away from the light, sort of how quickly. Uh, intensity is, of course, how bright it is. Um, it can be very dull light or it can be a blindingly bright light. Um, these are mostly what we want to talk about down here. Blink, uh, blink intervals, blink length, and blink offset. So let's use the four lights we have here. Um, and let's get them. Let's get them blinking. So I'm going to highlight all of them. So I'm going to I'm going to adjust all of them. And let's say blink interval two, and that's two seconds, which means uh, there is a blink uh, every two seconds. So if we turn these on, you can see there we go. Every two seconds, it's going to blink. So that's what the interval is: is the time in between blinks. And then another setting that's uh, useful here is this blink length. Uh, and that's a, expressed in a percentage, and that's a percentage of the blink interval. So every two seconds, there's a blink that lasts for 10% of two seconds. If we were to change that to, say, 50%, which, some simple math here, that's one second, every two seconds, there is a one-second blink. So there's basically, in this, case, in this case, there's one second off, one second on, one second off, one second on. So if you were to, uh, so it depends on what you're doing for these lights. Uh, it's, it's up to you. You know, if you want to have a very long blink, uh, you can turn that blink interval way up, and it will just kind of pulse off here and there if you want to have it mostly off. Um, but just blink very, very briefly every so often. You can drop it way down. You can see it sort of pulses. So that's useful for uh, an effect like, for example, if we, if we put these up here, make them all white and crank the intensity way up, uh, you can see that sort of looks like one of those radio towers. Um, uh, there's like the older version of them that are heads up for pilots that are red and they sort of like dull, sort of a dull pulsing. Um, and then some newer ones, it's sort of a strobe effect. And that's, that's something you can accomplish um, like this here. So if we wanted to do sort of a dull red effect as opposed to the strobe, we would just increase the blink length. And now it's kind of like a, let's see, on... Off. So it sort of, sort of can do either one of those or any variety in between. Um, so as you can see, a lot, lot of stuff you can do there. If you wanted to blink, you know, only every 30 seconds, you can have it up to there. Um, and again, the blink length is, is expressed as a percentage of that. So um, this is effectively no blink if you have 100%. Um, it just stays on because the blink length is fully the length of the blink interval. Um, if you were to uh, do this, let's say we put the blink interval up to four seconds and the blink length up to, oh, I don't know, 20. Um, in order to open that, that's something else I should talk about. On any of these um, slide bars, if you want to more precisely control rather than dragging, clicking and dragging it, you can hit control and uh, hold control and hit the left mouse button and it'll open up uh, this screen where you can actually input. Uh, directly the, the numbers that you want. Um, so now we have a, a two second blink interval and a 20 second, 20% 20 blink length. Um, now uh, let's talk about the blink offset. So if you want a series of lights to have the same uh, interval, uh, the same length, um, and have them sort of tied together to turn off and on together, but, um, but at the same time to not blink at the same time, you can offset them. Um, so let's turn it to say 50% offset just as an example, and we can see what happens. Now they sort of dance back and forth there. So one, one sets on, one sets off, as you can see. Um, so they're, they're sort of, uh, they're going back and forth like that. Now, something that you can do with these that's kind of neat is, uh, is to make sort of a runway effect, runway light effect. Um, let's turn those up to white. And uh, if we get down here to blank interval, blank length 20%, and now, uh, if we change the blink offset on this one to zero, let's make this one 10. 
and let's make this one three, or uh, thirty rather. Um, oh, sorry. I do this. I do this all the time. Um, it says it says light three, so I for some reason um, <laughs> add a add a zero to the back of that. Anyway, um, and then we're going to do a thirty percent offset on the fourth one. So we have a ten percent difference in offset every time. And now you can see it sort of chains through. And now to make that look even more like runway lights, we can highlight these, link them together here, and uh, change the blink uh, interval to. Actually, no, we don't, we, the blink interval is probably fine, but the blink length, we want it to be more of a pulse. Let's do 5%. See what that looks like. And now if we were to spread these out on a, a runway, uh, it, would look, it would look even more like the runway light sort of situation. But you can, get, you can get the idea of how you can do that, pulse them, pulse them like that in a row. So that's, that's uh, kind of some of the cool stuff you can do with, um, with the blink offset length and interval. Uh, Self-explanatory dragging and moving around to change the colors, obviously. If we look in here, now there, there are more functional blocks in this. These are just what I happen to have attached to this grid. Uh, but when, whenever you put one of these down here, like we saw last time, you get a whole list of things you can do. And then and these can all be programmed in, but only once on each panel. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If I tell this antenna to increase broadcasting length, um, and I wanted to do that again, or, or radius, sorry, increase broadcasting radius. I wanted, say I wanted to do that again. So let's say that this antenna has its broadcasting radius set to, I don't know, seven meters, right? And I want timer one to increase it uh, all the way up to full. So we have this all set up. Let's remove these so we're not doing extra things that we won't, don't want to do. Just timer block one now will only increase the antenna's broadcasting radius. So it was seven meters. Let's, let's go ahead and trigger it. And now we can see it's at 12 meters, so it's gone up five meters. And if we trigger it again, and then go back in and look, we can see, oh, now it's up to 21. So uh, there are different ways that you can adjust something like this in timers. Um, one thing that we can do, I'm going to slide this over here just because I'm a little OCD about it. Uh, we can create a loop, uh, just like we saw before, where we tell uh, timer 2, for example, to start, or to trigger now. Um, and then timer 2 needs to be programmed uh, just to start timer 1, or to trigger now timer 1. Uh, we don't need to delay in any of these. So with this setup now, timer 1 is going to increase the radius, trigger timer 2, which will instantly trigger timer 1, which will increase the radius, and continue that loop until you stop it. Um, I've noticed in some cases at least, it works doing it this way. So hit, hit trigger now, and now they're looping um, to increase all the way up to full. Um, but what I've noticed is that sometimes, even though it does work, there's some lag associated with it. Uh, it seems to bog things down. Uh, so I've, I've sort of strayed away from doing it this way. Um, and let's just make sure these have stopped. Now, uh, remove these. If we go back into timer one, we can actually do this more than once. Um, so if you were to try to drop another one of these here, you see it just moves. If you tell it to do something different, it, it can add that. But if you're trying to tell it to do exactly the same thing again, it just, it just takes away the other one. So you can only do it once. But in the same timer, we can actually do this up to 10 times because we can toggle through here. And as we add a new one here, same thing, increasing broadcasting radius, it saves both of these. See, I'm switching between 1 and 2. Uh, I'll add it to 3, and I'll put it in a different spot just so it's obvious. Uh, 1, 2, 3. And uh, so by doing that, um, like I say, in one timing block, you can get up to 10 of these uh, in a row, uh, and it will just run through all those commands. So that's kind of a possible way around uh, messing with one of those loops, uh, is to just use that trick to um, add it into different places. Now, there are a lot of other things that you can do with these. We won't talk about every function of every functional block in this video. As you can see, like for sensors here, uh, you can do a tremendous amount. For the most part, whatever you can do manually to a functional block, uh, you can tell a timer block to do that for you. So um, instead of going through dryly and just talking about each and every one, uh, let's jump over 
to something I'm actually working on now that involves timer blocks uh, to see one of the possible applications, one of the basically infinite possible applications of these timer blocks. All right, so we're actually in the bay of a, a fairly large land vehicle right now, uh, one that I'm building for the Voidcorp Technologies collection. It is the descent mining vehicle. So with, with planets on the way um, and the potential for some very large bodies with ore that could potentially be very deep underground, I wanted to think about a way uh, without just putting a whole bunch of pistons together, which can be really unstable, um, a way to uh, actually have a vehicle that's able to mine extremely deep and, and come back up um, and to be able to do so without having a mothership kind of vehicle that has a tremendously high uh, profile. Uh, because if you were to stack a bunch of pistons together, you can only go as deep um, as, I think, half uh, or double your height, something like that. So, I mean, each, each piston, I guess we can just take a piston out uh, right now and demonstrate this. We have a piston here. Um, if we put this on the side of the vehicle, we can see it's, it, it occupies two blocks, essentially. So that's five meters. It can extend a total of ten meters. So you need five meters of hardware to go 10 meters. Um, so if you were to keep stacking those together, uh, you can imagine with a ratio like that, if you were to try to go, say, oh, uh, 500 meters deep, um, you're going to have a vehicle that's just sort of unworkably high. Um, so my solution to that is, is this vehicle in this bay. Um, some basic stuff about it. I mean, you have the, the drills, you have some cargo, uh, the wheels here are sort of my attempt at a solution to an issue where the, the vehicle can end up running into walls. And of course, wheels are a uh, very good, very tough thing to use um, to help cushion uh, against, you know, striking ground. Um, so this is going to tunnel straight down. It's sort of like a, a drill head if you think of the way that um, we do very deep mining uh, today, you have sort of drill pipe that's built as you go, and you have a drill head that's down there drilling away. Uh, and what you can see here is essentially the drill pipe. Uh, and there's some, some inner workings here we'll talk about, but as we go up, um, you can see it stops here. Uh, and that's, you know, not a very tall pipe, but the blueprint, which I can uh, turn on by turning the projector on, drill head projector, you can see as we come out here, it goes pretty far. Pretty far up here. Uh, I forget how many meters I actually <laughs> did this, but as you can see, it's 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 high. So if we if we back out and look at it in comparison to the vehicle, and that's a pretty large vehicle, uh, you can see that's extremely high. Um, and what that'll allow this vehicle to do once I actually get it working properly, if hopefully I can, um, is that as this is lowered into the ground and as it drills, this welder continuously builds the pipe uh, behind it. So the deeper it goes. Uh, the longer the pipe gets, and because the pipe's being built up here continuously, the landing gear that's controlling the descent uh, can continue to have contact with this vehicle. Um, drawback to this vehicle is there's no direct link in terms of a uh, connection and no direct inventory link while it's drilling, but as you can see it has a fairly substantial inventory capacity on board, and when it's retracted it can connect directly to the uh, larger vehicle and offload its uh, its various ores. And when you're going to retract, uh, I have this set up with timers also, um, the welder will turn off because of course you don't want to be building pipe anymore. Um, and these grinders will actually uh, essentially recover the steel used to build the pipe as it's being retracted so that you don't end up with a uh, extremely tall pipe sticking out of the top of the vehicle. Um, now the sort of the gutty works of this down here uh, is the, the piston system here. Um, so we have a couple of static landing gear. Uh, those are holding on to the pipe right now. And then these uh, pieces of landing gear are actually the, uh, this is an assembly that moves together up and down to move the vehicle up and down. And I have uh, timers on loops set up to accomplish this. So as we were just talking about loops, this is a, an in-practice use of a loop uh, that's, that's useful. Um, now you'll notice there are a few of these landing gear that are off, one that is on, and I mentioned I hope I could get it running correctly. The reason I say that, and the reason that these are off, um, is that there's some kind of a bug, it seems, 
Uh, I've tried a number of things to make this work, so I'm, I'm thinking it's a bug at this point, uh, where sometimes in the loop, the landing gear that has attached does not unlock when it's supposed to. It just sticks, which causes all kinds of havoc in this system. And I found that if you turn off, uh, I used to have all of these working together. Um, now they're just sort of guides, and this is the one that actually grabs. Uh, there's, it's, there's less frequent occurrence of that with fewer landing gear. It seems like a sort of a random bug that happens. So without, uh, without further ado, let's, let's get into a position kind of, kind of in here where we can see the different landing gear doing what they're doing. This is probably, this one probably works uh, for now. Um, and let's start the system. I'll show you the actual timing block setup now, but you can see it's sort of released. Uh, now these have released. This is traveling up and now it's traveling down. So you can see it's sort of grabbing a hold and there, okay, it just did it already. So now see how it's staying attached when it should be released and that throws the vehicle around, which is obviously a problem. Um, but what this should be doing is releasing on the upstroke and then lowering like this. Here we go. I think it's finally doing it. Should be lowering on the downstroke. Ah, there we go. It's finally found its stride. So when it's, when this is going back up, the static, uh, landing gear hold it in place and when it's going down the static landing gear release and the uh, moving landing gear grab hold and extend it down. Um, now we can stop this loop with a timer here you can see it's it stopped its progress and there's another timer that will allow us to retract the uh, the pipe and you can see the welder turned off and the grinders turned on and now on the upstroke it's pulling it up and on the downstroke the static landing gear is holding it in place. Um, and once we get it high enough, although you see, you can see, I've made attempts to stabilize it, but when it, when this landing gear grabs when it's not supposed to, it doesn't seem to matter how much thrust or how many gyros you have, this happens. <laughs> and there's just not a lot I can do about it to this point. So let's do a, a quick reload here. Okay, so we've reloaded, so now we have the, uh, the vehicle intact again, uh, no longer destroyed. Um, and let's just get a different view of, of the, the function of this early on. So I've just initiated the timing block. So the first thing it does is disconnects and turns off this connector and then backs up the piston to get it out of the way. Oh, and hey, it, it did it on the first try. Oh, no. See how it's holding? It's holding on there and it shouldn't be. And that seems to be a bug. So let's take a look at the timing block programming. Um, I just wanted to show you the, the piston retract and connector function there. So when we talk about it, you know, um, you've had a chance to see what I'm referring to. And for now, I think we're just going to stop this motion. Um, and let's get in here and look at these timing blocks. So we have quite a number of them. And let's go ahead and start with the timing block that I used to start the whole sequence, which I, I named Mining Sequence Start Timer Block. I found in doing these, especially in complex builds, it's really important to have descriptive names for your functional blocks and timer blocks, uh, because when you get a lot of parts working together, if you leave the default names or you just have numbers or something, uh, at least for me, it can get just the befuddling. You can't figure out what's going on anymore. Um, so uh, if we look here, these are grayed out because we've actually disconnected um, already. Uh, but what the mining sequence timer block does is it turns the grinders off, it, uh, it turns the welder on, um, it turns the drill head projector on, which is what uh, allows us to build that pipe, and then the drill head thrusters are uh, turned on. Those are normally off because if you're moving in the vehicle with thrusters on, the inertial dampeners and the thrusters will try to stop the vehicle, which could cause all kinds of havoc inside the bay. And then there's a drill head onboard timer block. We'll take a look at that, but that's started in this timer as well. Uh, and then the other few things that happen is that the, uh, the rig to drill connector, so that connector that we saw uh, unlock, turn off, and back up is all in here. So it's, it's unlocking here, it turns off here, and then the piston reverses. The reason we unlock and turn off is that when it's on, even if it's unlocked, there's a magnetic kind of uh, attraction with the other connector. So if we were to just unlock it uh, and then try to deploy the vehicle uh, or try to retract, it would try to pull the vehicle uh, and we don't want that. So we want to unlock it, turn it off, um, and then retract that piston. And the last thing uh, done on this tab here is drill uh, piston loop timer starts. And I don't believe I have anything on the second. 
Oh, we do have one. So the dock sequence sensor is off. Okay, that'll come in later. Um, and that's actually something that's not useful right now because I haven't worked out that uh, potential bug with the landing gear locking. But um, so the two things we need to look at now is the drill head onboard timer block and the drill piston loop start timer block. So if we go down here to the uh, drill, oh, we can't because it's disconnected. So let me go ahead and pop out of here and we'll just access this manually to take a look at that because this is one of the timers that that timer started. So we will look at drill timer. Um, so it has a delay of 24 seconds and it's been told to start so it will respect that delay. Um, and then the drills turn on, the antenna which we've called depth uh, turns on and the lights turn on. The reason there is that delay is that we want it to be basically just about to or to have just made contact with the ground when the drills start because the drills can try to throw a vehicle around a little bit. Um, I have a number of things to stabilize it, so it's less important than when I first programmed this. My initial iteration before I found the issue with the landing gear throwing the vehicle around had uh, very uh, had no thrusters, um, and I believe I actually had no gyros at first. I maybe had a few. Um, but my thought was it's it has these wheels. It's going to be sort of pinned into a hole, and that there's no reason to try to do some of the stabilization that you'd normally do because these wheels will stabilize it when the drills are, are doing their work. But, uh, and so then, then of course the issue is with no stabilization, if it's up here and it's not in the hole yet, it is going to fly all over the place, um, run into things and all that. So that's what that, that onboard timer does, basically activates all of the functions of the drill head itself. And it's important that that's activated. I should go back here and show you the order of activation again. So let's go back into the mining sequence timer block. Um, it's important that the drill head onboard timer block, the drill head thrusters and drill head projector, that those are all taken care of um, before these disconnect. Now like we saw before things happen simultaneously, so I think if you were to put these disconnecting functions before these, um, it's possible that they would still receive the orders. But when you disconnect the, uh, the rig from the drill head, so like the large vehicle from the drill head, you can no longer directly through timers tell the functional blocks on the drill head to do things. That, that can only happen um, while they're actually connected because as you can see they're grayed out, that's because it's no longer connected. Now you can use the antenna to remotely operate it, but you have to do that manually. So uh, that's why these are happening after these. Now the next thing we need to look at is the drill piston loop start timer which is uh, what was started at the very end of the sequence uh, in this mining sequence start timer. Uh, there's the, the start timer and the loop timer. So let's look at the start timer. Two second delay, same as the loop timer. And the actions in the loop, in the start timer uh, is the uh, static drill pipe landing gear uh, is to lock the drill pipe landing gear unlock uh, and the drill piston uh, drill pipe pistons reverse and then it starts the loop timer and the loop timer uh, basically reverses that order um, so unlock lock uh, and then so basically the up and down uh, stroke of the pistons here is being accomplished by that loop so where they're going up and down up and down locking and unlocking over and over again uh, that is being accomplished by these drill piston uh, loop timers. Let's go back into timer. And there's a two second delay between each, which is enough time for the pistons to travel uh, the full distance that they need to uh, before they switch positions. Um, and these are actually used in the retract uh, portion as well. Um, all you need to do is start uh, at a different timer. Um, so the retract sequence is going to start this loop timer first instead of the uh, the loop start timer, if that makes sense. Uh, so you can see, oh, I have that backwards actually. So the loop start timer uh, is activated by the retract sequence. The uh, loop timer is started by the extension sequence. Now the reason for that is each of these loop timers is responsible for sending the pistons a different way, up or down, uh, and then and then changing the associated landing gear also. Um, 
Now the retract sequence, there's a, there's a docking sequence and retract sequence. Um, you can see this, this is starting this loop timer. Uh, the docking sequence um, is actually something that's kind of irrelevant at this point because uh, as, I, as you've seen and as I've said, the issue we've run into is this apparent bug um, where we we're trying to tell the landing gear that they need to unlock at a certain time and they refuse to unlock at a certain time and that should be happening in here. Now I've tried different things to fix this. Uh, I've tried to um, tell them to uh, change their, you know, so if it's going to unlock for example, I've tried telling it to unlock and then turn off. Um, I've tried adding like a safety timer in, so essentially adding two more timers into the loop. So there's a whole, there's an, there's an extra delay and there's a whole separate timer that's just telling the landing gear to do something. Doesn't seem like anything I can do there will uh, will actually change anything. Um, but we can initiate this this timer again, um, and it's still still on, still functioning. Uh, as you can see, that's that's kind of the that's the motion that's intended. Now it's actually working, and it seems random when it works and when it doesn't. I think you've seen enough of these now to see that it's a little random, like it's working now. I didn't do anything differently. Um, it just, for whatever reason, is behaving this time, uh, and it's actually fairly stable, um, and it's, it's working pretty well. Now, this is not digging into ground because I'm just building at this point out in space. It's a little easier to do that sometimes, um, but you can get a sense for how this would work. This would extend down below this vehicle pretty... Essentially, it can go down as far as you have steel to build a pipe. Oh, things are things have gone wrong. Oh my gosh! I hope my guy's okay in there. Oh boy. <laughs> that's so. That's that's the that's the problem that we've run into. Um, I was hoping to get this out quite a long time ago, uh, and I hope I can still actually get it to work because I think it's a it's a fun idea, um, and it's a way to actually mine to uh, great depths. Um, as I said, without a having like a, a super 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 tall vehicle uh, with all kinds of pistons stacked on each other which bring their own problems but because of this apparent bug or my inability to figure out a way to do this correctly uh, it's it's just not um, not working for me so if any of you are gurus of landing gear and timing blocks um, if you're seeing this and you know of a way to reliably get landing gear to lock and unlock and not uh, goof up their positions as they are here. Please let me know. I'd love to. I'd love to have a hand in completing this because I've been working on it for some time, and I've tried so many different things, and it's frustrated me all the way. But uh, anyway, I, I just wanted to show you at the end of this uh, tutorial, in a very babbly, long-winded fashion. I apologize for that. Um, uh, an application for or a potential application, I should say, because it's not working correctly right now, for loops. Uh, and there are a lot of them. Um, the loops are, are very useful. Oh, also, if, uh, if you're very new to this game and you're wondering about timing blocks that you're seeing here, these are the small ship timing blocks. That's why they look very different from the timing blocks in the first part of this episode and in the last one in the beginner part, is that this is just the small grid version of a timing block. Um, and I actually needed a small grid attached to this ship uh, in order to make this process work and whenever I'm doing that anyway I like to use these small ship timing blocks because they just take up less space they're much more compact as you can see we've got what one two three four eight eight of them uh, so we would have filled like a whole wall of the side of this with timing blocks if we did that with the large timing blocks well, I hope that was interesting, and I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope uh, somebody out there perhaps has a solution for me on this. That would be great. Uh, I'd love to hear your ideas. Also, I would love to hear about what you would like to see done with timing blocks. Just something you're hoping to see, or uh, maybe something that you've tried, and, and like me in this situation, have just been frustrated and not able to uh, make it work quite the way you want. Uh, let me know, and uh, give me the details. Uh, shoot me a message uh, on email or, uh, or Twitter, or... Uh, leave a message in the comments and tell me uh, what you would like to see done. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. So can I eat this? I've got 38% carrots. I feel like I need more carrots. Um...